Hey, 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 you guys. I am back with another video. And today's topic, we are talking all about five things I learned from being in a diaper cake business, from having my diaper cake business. So if you are in the gift business industry, you're looking to start your diaper cake business, then this video is going to be just for you because I'm going to tell you some of the things that I learned while being a diaper cake business owner. So if that is something that interests you, stay tuned. All right. So the first thing is a little backdrop. For those of you that have been following me for a while or maybe you're new here, my first, the very first business was the La Tursa Diaper Cakes. And I was in that business for maybe five to six years or so. Um, and I really, like I always tell people, that was my first love. I'm a crafty girl at heart. So my diaper cake business was really how it all began for me. That's how I started my entrepreneur journey. And I want to share with you today on five things that I learned while being in diaper cake, in a diaper cake business. The first thing I learned was how to handle um, returns and policies. When you in a diaper cake business or any kind of gift business, you need to have your returns and policies and terms in place. Because anytime you're having something tangible, even if it's digital, you need to have terms and conditions in place, you guys. Because I messed myself up a lot in the beginning days because I didn't have a return policy if somebody didn't like their diaper cakes, I didn't have a re return policy in place. So a lot of times I ended up giving a refund back, um, losing money when I could have had my um, terms and conditions in place that, you know, these gifts are non-refundable because they're so tangible because they because of the nature of a diaper cake. Usually diapers go on the new mom and if you make your diaper cake right, you know, they're going to take it apart and use those diapers and see once they go into somebody else's home, you pretty much don't have no control over what's happened next. So when you have your terms and conditions in place, it saves you a lot of headache. It saves you a lot of lost money because I lost a lot, you guys. <laughs> but, and you can learn more about my story in the diaper cake business. I have a ton of videos about diaper cake business on my channel. I still got to make a um, playlist for it, but just search my videos and you'll see uh, videos on mistakes that I made while I was in business as a diaper cake owner. Um, and then too, um, the second thing you want to know about is it, I, I learned how to be more creative. So when you're a crafty girl like myself, your creativity is always on 100. Like you're always thinking of the next best thing. And when I started my diaper cake business, in order for you to be around for the long haul, you're going to have to stay and continue to learn your craft, continue to learn new other um creative uh, gift ideas or anything like that because you don't want to just be a one hit wonder. You want to continue to produce those beautiful gifts, but you also want to have a variety, not just diaper cakes. You know, you want to add favors. You want to add maybe like I did towel gift cakes. Um, you want to add different things. And then too, you just want to be creative because like I said, you can learn how to do so much by just being creative. So it taught me a lot about being creative, but also being willing to learn more and which I've never had a problem learning because I love learning. But when you're in a diaper cake business, you got to be able to set yourself apart. And that's one thing that I encourage all of you that are in diaper cake business or you're looking to start, you always got to find an angle to be different because there are always going to be some similarities to your cakes and somebody else's, but you want to take it and put your own spin onto it. So like I should be able to recognize your diaper cakes in a pile of other people's cakes. Like for myself, People knew my diaper cakes when they saw them because they know how creative and how much love I put into my diaper cakes. So you want to be able to continue to be creative and continue to find ways to add more variety to your listing and your price. And again, I talk a lot about um, the different varieties and things that I added to my diaper cakes to continue to help me in my diaper cake business course. So I'm going to try to put a picture somewhere here on the screen for you, but it will be below in the description box, you guys. 
And like I said, being creative, your your creativity is going to continue to grow as long as you keep nourishing it and don't let it get stale. And then the third thing I learned from being in my diaper cake business was I learned how to negotiate and collaborate with other people in business. I learned how to collaborate in, uh, with uh, boutique owners, um, gift shops. I learned and put my skill to test by learning how to negotiate. You know, sometimes you may have a pitch to an organization. They may not necessarily like that, but when you learn how to negotiate, you may not get the necessarily upfront deal that you wanted, but you may get something out of it. And I always tell people something is better than nothing, especially when it comes to corporate contracts, because that's how you're going to make majority of your money in any kind of gift business. When you have those consistent streams of revenue, like you have those um, corporate contracts that come in on a consistent basis. That's how you want to make the majority of your money and learning how to negotiate is what got me, you know, a lot of corporate contracts because I learned how to negotiate by accident, really, because just because they don't accept your first offer doesn't mean they won't accept the second. You just got to learn what their needs are, what their pain points are, and tailor your offer to solve whatever problem they have. And so learning how to negotiate and collaborate is going to really move you forward in a faster way. And then the next thing that I learned from my diaper cake business is don't take everything personal. In business, in life in general, you have to learn there will always be somebody in the comments. There will always be somebody lurking around. Just, I think some people just get a kick out of seeing other people thrive and it just bothers them that you are being so successful. And you're going to have those negative comments on your Facebook fan page, your YouTube channel. You're going to have somebody to test you on every angle, but you got to learn how to not allow that stuff to get on the inside of you because it will because i'm telling you in my earlier days i used to be a cry baby because i just couldn't believe you know some of the comments or some of the things people would say and a, a lot of times it would be lies but you know when people don't really know you and they only see good things out on online about you they gotta throw some shade they gotta put something negative out there because that's what sells you know negativity so i used to cry a lot in my early days because i let it get to my heart and that is something that you have to learn how to do in business in general is to not take everything so personal you're gonna have some upset customers i haven't had that many thank god but I've had a few and sometimes you just can't please people no matter what you do, no matter how you try to make it better, you're always going to have somebody that still is not happy. And I always say you take it with a grain of salt. You can't please everybody, but go out of your way to make sure, especially if it's a customer or a previous customer, go out of your way and apologize. If it's on your part, apologize, make it right. Because I'm telling you, one negative review can tear down a year's worth of business that you've been working 10 plus years on but that one negative comment can can mess up your whole operation and then my last and final thing that i learned on um while being in business is only share things online that you want maybe you wouldn't mind be it being repeated five or ten years down the road because here's the thing once things are out there on social media they're out there people screenshot People have sites where they just upload a bunch of negative stuff. You have to be very careful nowadays, especially in this digital world that we live in. You have to be willing to be relatable, but know how much to share. And I talk a lot about this on my channel. And you probably hear me say it all the time because I was burnt like that. You know, I was an open book. I was too open. You know, certain things you just don't share because everybody interpret things different everybody um does not um people are always looking for something to judge you on so you have to not play into that game of giving them every little detail about your life yes you can be relatable yes you can talk to your customers and your clients and let them know you know the things that are going on but at the same time you want to have something that is only for you you have to 
have to not be so open book where people have and know everything about you. Take an example from Beyonce's life. She don't share a lot. She don't comment. She don't um, approach or or get in the comments when people come for her and talk nasty about her. She don't engage in it. Some things you just got to just let it be, you know, because people are always going to have an opinion. And so when you're in your business, make sure you are sharing things that can help your potential customer. You know, even if you're in the corporate world, if an employee are searching you out, make sure that you've cleaned up your social media pages because you'd be surprised how employers now, they're searching your personal content on social media. And that's another thing that I advise you to do. Keep your personal page private and then have a page, your business fan page, public for the public because employers they can be shady they 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 do more than what they should do when they're trying to research people and a lot of times a bunch of mess is online and if that's how you are deciding whether or not you're not wanting to hire a person or don't want to move forward with a person because of what you read online that's kind of wrong because you don't know if the stuff is true or not so just be mindful you guys of what you share um on social media so those are my five things you guys that i learned be sure to give this video a thumbs up you guys make sure you check out my other videos on diaper cake business because again i want to see you guys um win i want to see you guys successful make sure you check out my um diaper cake business course and i have a, a, a few other resources like i have how to secure corporate contracts if you're trying to get you some contracts so you can get some consistent revenue coming in i also have a gift business ebook and i have a e-guide on the top 25 places where i used to sell my diaper cakes to make consistent revenue in my diaper cake business so make sure you check that out i have all that in the link in the um, bio in the description for you guys. I love you guys. God bless and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.